Hi everyone, Paul here from FamilyWheels.ca with another car review for your growing family. And man, it's gotten cold again. I just thought we were out of the deep freeze, but we're right back into it, into the minus 20s, which means that all the car washes are closed. And that also means we haven't been able to wash this thing off. So mind the icy car behind me here. In fact, let's cue some more generic warm climate footage, shall we? While we talk a little bit more about this car. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, yes, this is the Lincoln Continental, the flagship Dan for the company been around since 1939 if you can believe it but it had a bit of a hiatus in 2002 it was taken out of the company's lineup but it's back for 2017 and Lincoln has really got a play here to compete with some pretty big name luxury sedans the BMW 5 Series the Audi A6 the Mercedes E-Class the Lexus GS these are all cars that have done so well over the last few years particularly in the Chinese market and the Continental is going to be offered up in China in fact but for it to be really competitive with these vehicles it's going to have to be so well executed because it's a very competitive segment it can't just be a dressed up Ford with some fancy badging and a slightly fancier interior. And the way that we're going to test it this week is going on a great big ski road trip. Great time to test this car's all wheel drive system on the windy mountain roads that we're going to be driving through. It's been very snowy out here. Let's see how the new Continental stacks up and in fact, if it can play with the big boys. That's this week here on Family Wheels. So if you are cross shopping the Continental with some of those vehicles that I've already mentioned, one thing you're going to notice right away is that it price wise lines up pretty well with those other cars at about $57,000 for the base Continental up to this reserve package that we're in here today. This is the top of the line trim with a lot of the extra packages and bells and whistles thrown on as well for about $77,500. When you're spending that kind of dough on a luxury sedan, I've talked about this before, you want it to feel like a very special place like you don't want to leave the vehicle once you get to your final destination and Lincoln's done a nice job of doing that by creating what it calls touch points in this vehicle so whether it's on the outside looking at the elegant lines on this car I think that up above the rear wheel wells it kind of has a little bit of a Rolls-Royce look to it and then up in the front of this vehicle the headlamps look a bit Mustang inspired that same sort of upturned cat like look so it looks both very stylish and elegant but very sporty as well and then you've got the proximity key in your pocket so as you approach this car the lighting is going to turn on you've got the Lincoln logo projected at your feet when it's dark outside and it does give you that kind of special place feel once you step inside the Continental it looks so good in here this is the best executed interior that we've come across on any of our tests in any domestic car I love all the soft touch surfaces the uh, Continental exclusive steering wheel feels solid in your hands the switch wear on the steering wheel is really intuitive and doesn't feel cheap and chintzy I found this with the MKX when we were testing it last spring that in a lot of ways it kind of felt like a dressed up Ford Edge the switch wear didn't really match up with the price tag or with the competitors that the MKX was going for uh, and I, in the end my conclusion on that car was save yourself a bunch of cash if you really like that platform and that engine you can get it on the edge and at the end of the day you're selling yourself thousands of dollars but there is no equivalent to this in the Ford line this is not like the Ford Taurus it has a completely different platform once we get inside here and get it up to highway speed it's really quiet we're at 60 decibels at 100 kilometers an hour according to our decibel reader test and that makes it one of the quietest interiors we've ever tested then if you really want to bump up the noise in this vehicle the optional $5,500 luxury package includes this 19 -speed speaker Revel audio sound system, one of the best I've ever come across as well. It sounds amazing in here, so if you're a real audiophile, consider spending that extra bit of dough. We look at the seat package on this car, and they are very comfortable seats too. Standard 10-way adjustable front seats, but if you really want to up the game for an extra 750 bucks, you see what I mean about all these different packages, but this is a worthwhile one to add on because you get 30-way adjustable seats. Just infinite adjustments that you can make in these things. They're very comfortable. One thing I would say is that in some ways, maybe a little bit 
too adjustable. You can adjust the length of, of the thigh supports, uh, both on the left and the right side, and it gives you this really weird seam right down the middle of the seat. That means that a lot of things could get stuck in there. Of course, perforated seats, which we have in this vehicle because of the ventilated seat option, means that you're gonna have a hard time cleaning out all those tiny perforations as well. That's both in the front and second row. So while I am talking about a lot of options here for the Continental, standard equipment is also really good, particularly up here in Canada. So in the States, you can get a more basic V6 non-turbo engine. It doesn't come with all-wheel drive as standard, but here in Canada, we get a twin-turbo 2.7 liter engine in the, in the base model. We also get all-wheel drive. And the all-wheel drive system in this car, we've had a very snowy week here in uh, Canada, it has been amazing. I have gotten out of air areas in this car where others have been absolutely stuck. People have been waiting for tow trucks 20 hours with a good set of winter tires and this all-wheel drive system standard here in Canada. This feels like a really great winter driver. Also standard in the Continental are these Bridge of Weir leather seats, which is a super supple, super high-end leather that gets sourced from Scotland. We have Ford Sync 3 infotainment system with navigation. Huge improvement from Ford over their previous generation of uh, infotainment system, and it makes it one of the best in the industry, in my opinion, with some really great voice recognition software as well on board. And also, one thing that I like about this Continental in particular is that I've complained with other Ford vehicles that some of the features that you might want to use regularly like adjusting the heated steering wheel or adjusting the massage seat function which we have here in this tester you have to go through menus that are buried to make those adjustments not here in the Continental we have buttons right on the dash right here on the side of the door that make it really easy to do things like that also standard we have a high definition rear backup camera front and rear parking sensors and blind spot monitoring although if you want to get things like adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist things like that you're gonna to have to spend 3,000 bucks on top of that for the technology package. But then when we look at things like uh, push button start, remote start, active noise cancellation here in the cabin to keep the ride as quiet as possible, all those things come standard as well. So it's a pretty well festooned vehicle even at that base price point. Now in terms of how this car drives, there are two engines available to you up here in Canada. There's that base 2.7 liter twin turbo, which I've had a chance to drive in a couple of Lincoln vehicles now, and I really like it, but it's when you get into this optional $3,000 extra, this three liter 400 horsepower twin turbo that the Continental really starts to sing. Now here's what's interesting. I've driven this engine in the MKZ as well, which is Lincoln's slightly smaller sedan, which is targeted at slightly younger buyers and while it has the same CD4 platform the same transmission the same engine Lincoln's done something interesting here again their target demographic for the MKZ is a younger buyer somebody who's looking for something a little bit sportier and it's zero to hundred times will reflect that as well but once you get here into the Continental this engine has been tuned to be a bit more of a cruising car because and again this comes straight from Lincoln the demographic that they're targeting slightly older people in their mid 50s or older people who've made it in the business world and want something that's a bit more of a cruising car. So the continuously controlled damping here in this car, the suspension feels very smooth. It really irons out the bumps in the road. The engine, this 400 horsepower, isn't quite as eager, but it's always got the power when you want it. So when you're looking for something for highway cruising like we've done here this week, you can't really match this Continental. It really is superb and the ride quality is excellent. But if you're looking at the fuel economy on this car, don't expect it to be top, top tier. We're averaging this week about 11 and a half liters per 100 kilometers. That's with mostly highway driving as well. Lincoln says that you should see about nine and a half to 14 and a half liters per 100 kilometers out of this engine. When we do compare this to the MKZ, one thing that I really like about the Continental is the interior space. I've got lots more headroom up here in the front row. One of my complaints from the driver's position in the MKZ was that I didn't have much headroom at all. Not a problem here in the Continental. So as I already mentioned, the Continental for the first time ever is being offered up to the Chinese market for 2017. And when it comes to luxury sedans, the back seat is king in China. And that's because people who are spending this kind of money on a car are often still being driven around. They've got a chauffeur. So they want to have a really comfortable back seat. And the Continental's delivering on that front in a number of ways. First up, you've got this rear seat package available for $5,000, which gives you all kinds of belts 
bells and whistles, which a lot of uh, them are controlled right through the center armrest here. We've got things like ventilated rear seats, heated rear seats. You've got your own climate control functions. You can control the audio system. We've got a rear sun visor back here, which slides up and gives you a little bit of extra privacy as well. Part of the rear seat package is also this great big panorama sunroof and you can control that from back here too. And then when we look over here at the door panel, we've got adjustable rear seats, including reclining functions. We've got lumbar adjustments that we can do so you can dial things in as you like. And the massage function comes here into the back seats as well. I am disappointed that my headroom is really limited here in the Continental. I'm six foot two and I'm grazing the roof liner here. If I'm looking for a limo-like ride, that's gonna take away from it quite a bit. But when it comes to leg room, forget about it. It's amazing back here. You can fit a front-facing, rear-facing, Facing car seat, no problem, even with tall adults up front. But here's something that's not going to be so great for kids when you buy this rear seat package. Check this out. You can also adjust the front passenger seat from here in the seat that I'm sitting in right now. It's great if you want to give yourself more legroom back here, but I can just imagine that if you've got a couple of kids sitting back here, they're going to play around with this button. Perhaps forego the rear seat package if you've got young kids in the family, because I can see that being a bit of a problem. Now here's something that Lincoln's offering up for the first time ever in the Continental, and it's a first for any Ford product, actually. It's electronically latching doors. So you don't see traditional door handles here inside. Instead, you've got this button down here, which you press, and the door opens up really effortlessly. And then if you go outside here, and you don't slam the door really hard, it's gonna suck itself in. Let's see if it'll do it here. Yeah, you see that? That's the sort of thing that I've seen on Mercedes products before, but I've never seen that on a North American car. Pretty cool to see that here in the Continental. When it comes to the trunk, it's auto lift, auto close. You've got a button right here, which uh, will close up the trunk for you. And you can see that our standardized trunk test of a diaper bag, a stroller, a couple of bags of groceries, a backpack and a soccer ball all fit really well, but it's actually not as big of a trunk as I was expecting, 473 liters. That's nothing to sneeze at, but it's also really not that much bigger than the MKZ. And in a tradition of large American sedans having huge expansive trunks that can gobble up uh, big uh, bags of golf clubs and that sort of thing. I was surprised to see that the trunk in this isn't just a little bit bigger. On the plus side though, it does have a pass through through that second uh, row middle seat. So if you do have skis, something like that, that you need to throw into the back of this vehicle, you can pull it off here in the Continental. Well, Lincoln really has put its best foot forward here in its flagship sedan for 2017. And despite what has been a pretty long hiatus for the Continental, it seems like people are willing to put their money into the domestic luxury market. Because if we compare sales of this car back in December of 2016 to the Audi A6, there were actually more Continentals sold in Canada. And whether you're sitting up here in the driver's seat in what is a very capable car with great power and a very nicely laid out interior or if you're sitting in the back seat there enjoying the lap of luxury with some great rear legroom I don't think Roger has ever sat in a more luxurious second row I was disappointed to see that lack of headroom for taller passengers though but nonetheless if you're sitting in any of these positions you're gonna feel like you're sitting in a very European inspired car that really can keep up with some of those big names out there that it wants to compete with but now it's your turn. What do you think of the Continental? How do you think it compares to its European counterparts? And what did it really miss out on for 2017? You can leave a comment below. Please subscribe while you're at it. And then check out our report card on this vehicle with a bullet point list of pros and cons for the Continental at familywheels.ca. Next week on the program, we are in the very family-oriented seven-passenger Toyota Highlander. We're going to head out with a family that chose that car over all the rest and see how it's stacked up. That's next week on the program. Until then, have a great week, and thanks for tuning in.